Hi everyone, it's Matt Barnes here. I'm the lead trainer at Safety in the Market, and I'm putting together this short video called Anatomy of a Market Crash for our Safety in the Market students, based on the discussions that I've been having with a number of you over the last two weeks or so. And those discussions have all boiled down to the fact that this market crash didn't just come out of nowhere, and it was predictable in advance. And the proof of that is that in my setting up the year videos, which I prepared for all of our coaching students in January this year, we spoke about the potential for a major top on global indices, and in particular here on the S&P 500, just below the 3400 level in the middle of February, and for a major correction to occur after that. So was this crash predictable? Absolutely it was, and there are three key components to this crash that I'd encourage you to study and put a lot of work into if you want to understand how this all came together and why the market did what it did at the specific price that it did and at the specific time that it did. So those three key components that I'd encourage you to study are number one, price. Why did markets stop at the level that they stopped at? Now, you might be wondering, how do we study price? How do we come up with that price forecast? Well, the two key things that you need to pay attention to are your swing chart ranges and your resistance cards. And these are things that WD Gand laid out for us and that David Bowden clarified in his Active Trader program. So we're going to take a look at the concept of price and how we used price to come up with the level of the top. The second component is what I call position of the market. Why is it that once these tops came in, the markets collapsed rather than just pulling back and having a small retracement for two days or two weeks or two months, for example, and then continuing to the upside? What was it about the position of the market that made it a really important place to watch for the end of the bull market and for a major bear market to begin? Now, in this presentation, I'm going to address both of those points, but I'm also going to take it one step further and talk about a third component, which is the fact that markets didn't just fall. People didn't just walk to the exit in an orderly fashion. Everybody panicked and everyone tried to get out of the market at the same time. And because of that panic, we've seen the absolute severity of the falls and the markets have fallen 20 to 25 percent in just a couple of weeks. In fact, the S&P 500 fell in its first week alone 50% of the price of the entire bear market from 2007 to 2009. So as you can see, it covered a very wide price in a very short period of time. And that's what we constitute as a panic. So these are the three components that I think that you should study and three questions that you should ask yourself about these market crashes. Why did it stop at that price? What was it about the position of the market that indicated a significant fall? And why did everybody panic? So let's begin. Now, we'll start by dealing with price. And as we go through these components, I'm going to show you the specific areas of your safety in the market course manuals that you will need to study if you want to brush up on any of these points. So here's the E-mini S&P 500 futures contract. And as you can see, the top of the market came in at 3,397.5 points on the 20th of February, 2020. Now, back in January, I put together a price forecast for this market for a level of 3,378. So I got to within a half a percent or so of the final top price in the S&P 500, and that was called in advance. As you can see, even though the market slightly exceeded that level, it had a lot of trouble closing above that level. And in fact, after a few attempts, it decided, nope, I've had enough. And then it turned around and hammered to the downside. So the first part of this market crash that you need to study is the price forecasting element. Why did the market stop at these price levels? Price itself is one of the most overlooked and underrated elements of GAN analysis. A lot of people study WD GAN's work and they'll often quote GAN where GAN said that time is more important than price. And that is absolutely true. However, David Bowden, the founder of Safety in the Market, took that phrase one step further when he said, in order to understand time, you have to understand price first. And that's where a lot of people go wrong with this stuff. 
They want to go running in and looking at time. But in order to get that full understanding of time, you need to have a mastery of price first before you can move forward. So how did I put together the price forecast for 3,378 on the S&P 500? So how do we go about putting together a price forecast? Well, WD Gans spelled it out for us. He told us to break down market ranges into one eighth points. And by doing that, we get a series of price milestones to watch. David Bowden took that one step further in the Smarter Starter Pack and gave us the roadmap chart. And on that chart, he actually highlighted not hundreds of points, but four key points in a price range that we should watch when we're putting together a price forecast. So this is where you should start when you're doing your price work. You start with these price milestones. WD Gann and David Bowden teach us how to find these individual price pressure points. So for example, WD Gann talks about the importance of the 50% milestone. That's one example. The 50% milestone, which by the way, Gann says you can make a fortune just trading off the 50% rule alone. But the 50% milestone gives you one price pressure area to watch in the market. The trick when you're putting together a price forecast is to put all of your analysis onto the chart and then observe the key areas in the market where you've got a number of milestones all lining up together. And that gives us what we call a price cluster. And that's how you do it. That's how you put a price forecast together like that. So if you've got the Smarter Starter Pack, pull out your roadmap chart and have a look. Have a look at those key milestones, those key pressure areas in the market that David says to watch for. Then go and find them on all of your swing charts. Go and identify where they are and where those levels are coming out and look to see where you've got a clustering of major milestones all coming out around the same price level. And that's what we had on the S&P 500. Now, in order to get all of these milestones onto your charts, there are two things that you're going to need. There are two applications of this technique that really sum up everything that we're doing. The first of those are your swing chart ranges, and these are detailed heavily in the Smarter Starter Pack and the beginnings of the number one trading plan. The second thing that you need to do is apply your resistance cards to the market. And these are covered in detail in the price forecasting area of the number one trading plan, specifically section 11. Now, when you start preparing a price forecast, as I said, lay out all of the resistance levels that WD Gann and David Bowden talk about. But the best advice I can give you is to just focus on the stronger or more important pressure points that David highlights for us. Don't try and do everything at once or you'll end up with too many lines on your chart. But simply put the most important milestones on there and then look for a collection or cluster of milestones all at the same level. That's all the price forecast is. It's a collection or cluster of price milestones, individual milestones, all coming out together at the same level. And what it looks like on your chart is just a simple collection of lines all in a row. It's like a brick wall with multiple layers. That's how you'll recognize a price cluster, and that's where you're going to get your price forecast from. Now, if you'd like to do a little bit more work on price forecasting, I'd encourage you to study David Bowden's Active Trader Program, which is made up of the Smarter Starter Pack and Number One Trading Plan manuals. And for those who'd like to do a little bit extra work, I ran a full one-day price forecasting webinar back in 2017, where I put together everything that I know about price forecasting, all of the techniques, all of the examples. There's a booklet of case studies with which is over 100 pages long, and it takes you through all of the different applications of price forecasting and shows you how to put together price forecasts like this one that we've just seen on the S&P 500. So we've dealt now with the element of price and why it's important to know the particular price level that a market is going to run up to. The next thing I want to talk to you about is the position of the market. Having a look at the S&P 500, you can see that it's been running up since March of 2009. And along the way, there have been a series of pullbacks. We saw one in 2010, one in 2011, uh, one in 2015, one at the end of 2017, another one at the beginning of 2018. So there's been a number of pullbacks along the way. What was special about this particular top that made me think we were looking at a final top rather than just another top before more upside. And the answer can be found in one of WD Gann's lessons called sections of the market. So let's take a look at that now. 
Now, in this lesson, which is taken from W.D. Gann's book, How to Make Profits in Commodities, W.D. Gann says that a bull or a bear campaign is going to run out in three or four sections. So what he's saying is it's not just going to run forever. It's going to unfold in a reasonably orderly fashion in three to four sections most of the time. Now, the book was called How to Make Profits in Commodities. So clearly he's talking about commodities in that book. But just keep in mind that these rules apply to all markets, whether they're stocks, currencies, stock indices, or commodities. I'll leave this for you to pause and read for yourself if you wish, but I will just draw your attention to two key parts of this lesson. The first is where Gann talks about the third section of the market. He says, in many cases, this third section means the end of the campaign, but you must watch for a definite indication before deciding that the third run up means a change in the main trend. The next part of this lesson that I wanna draw your attention to is the fourth section. And this is a really important part of the lesson. If you take nothing else away from sections of the market, pay attention to this. Gann says, often four sections are run out and this fourth move or run up is the most important to watch for the end of a bull campaign and a change in trend. So focusing on just these two parts of the lesson, let's now go back and have a look at the 11 year bull market in the S&P 500. And as you can see there, we can count out one, two, three, four sections in the market. One starting in 2009 and running up to the 2011 top. Another one starting in 2011. Another one starting in February of 2016. And the fourth section starting up in December of 2018. So as you can see, when we were hitting this price level in February, it wasn't just hitting any old price level, it was hitting a very strong price cluster in what was forming the fourth section up of a bull market. And Gann says that fourth section is the most important to watch for a change in trend. Now, WD Gann's sections of the market are very similar to something that you've probably heard of called Elliott Wave Analysis. And if you have profit source trading software, uh, you'll have Elliott Wave Analysis incorporated within that software. Personally, I prefer to use GAN's sections of the market approach. I think they're much simpler and easier to apply. And to be honest, in trading, we're always looking for ways to simplify our decision-making process, not to complicate it, because the more simple we can make our trading, the easier it will be for us to pull a trigger and to take a trade and get into the market. And in order to do that, I much prefer something simple like GAN's sections of the market rather than something like Elliott Wave, which is a lot more subjective and a lot more complex. Now, there's more to this sections of the market lesson than just counting one, two, three, or four. And for those who would like to take this study a little bit further, again, I'd point you towards the price forecasting webinar, which some of you may have. If not, it is available in the Safety in the Market shop on our website. In addition to that, you've also got a great lesson on position of the market in David Bowden's Ultimate GAN course. So that brings us to the third component now of the market crash, which is the panic. Why did everybody go nuts and run out and start stocking up on toilet paper and panic buying goods and emptying shelves? Why was there not just an orderly exit? Why did everyone rush for the door at the same time? Well, so far, we've looked at the price and position. We've seen why the market made a top at the price that it did. And we know from the position of the market why markets have fallen heavily. But here's the key question. Why did they crash? Why did people panic? And the answer to this question really lies at the heart of all of GAN analysis and everything that GAN teaches us. And I'm going to sum it up for you, all of GAN analysis and his entire methodology in two simple words. And those words are history repeats. Now, I'm not talking in riddles here. I'm not talking in parables or writing in a veiled language or trying to hide something for you. I'm telling you straight out, that is Gann's lesson, history repeats. Now, if you take that at its face value, history repeats, could I suggest to you that perhaps it might be a good time to become a student of history, and in particular, a student of market history? After all, if history is going to repeat, it makes sense to study what's happened in the past so that you can recognize when it's happening again in the future. Now, in terms of the panic, back in January of 2020, we discussed the specific period of the market that was going to be repeating from February 2020 onwards. 
I'm not going to share that with you here in a YouTube video, but I will tell you where to find that information a little bit later on in the video. So we were watching for drama and panic in the market, but I want to make one thing very clear here. We didn't know that it would be coronavirus that would be causing the panic. Okay, there was nothing written in the chart saying, be aware of coronavirus from February 2020 onwards. No, but what we were focusing on was the conditions that we knew were going to be repeating from the middle of February. And that was evidenced in the market, in the charts, before it happened. On that note, by the way, isn't it interesting that news of the coronavirus was out for about a month before the markets crashed? And there were some of us, uh, myself included in the newsletter articles, questioning why was the market disregarding the coronavirus? There was nothing being said about it. The markets weren't selling off and panicking, but we saw that factories in China were closing down. There were going to be disruptions to the supply chain. It was never going to be a good thing for the economy. And yet markets seemingly turned a blind eye to this news until that February 20 period, when all of a sudden the lights came on and everybody started panicking. And all I'll say about that is that I believe the panic happened at the right time. Everything happens at the right time. Now, I have just summed up for you Gan's most important message in those two words, history repeats. And as I said, I mean that literally. If you'd like to learn more about how history repeats and when history repeats, the topic is explained in detail in David Bowden's Master Forecasting course, in particular in Chapter 8. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. If you have, please click on the like button and also subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all of our future videos. If you'd like to learn more about what we do at Safety in the Market, please check out our Safety in the Market website. Thanks for watching and bye for now.